Hey, and welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to be making a chromatic aberration effect in UE4 and 5. If you like our content or just need a helping hand with your project, join our Discord or check out our calendar for slots today. We provide one-on-one -on -one sessions where we offer help in 3D asset creation, Unreal blueprints, materials, Steam page setups, and more. But yeah, with that said, let's get into the tutorial. Alright, so if we right-click and create a new material, and let's call this M underscore chromatic aberration. And let's go into this guy. And the first thing we're going to want to do is change our material domain to a post-process material. And go all the way down to blendable location. And we want to set this to scene color before depth of field. So that should get us set up to create our material now. So the general principle of a chromatic aberration effect is that we're going to break our image down into three channels, the R, G and B and then we're going to offset them in different directions. Now after they've been offset, we're going to recombine them into one whole RGB value and then output it. So the first thing we're going to need to do is get a scene texture. So if we get a scene texture and to get our scene render, what we need to do is set this guy to a post-process input zero and chuck this guy into our output. And to offset this guy, what we're going to want to do is go over here and we're going to manipulate the UVs. So if we create a screen position, which is going to give us our viewport UVs, like this guy here, and we're going to offset this. So if we add, chuck this guy into here, and you're going to see that it's going to go blank for now, but we're going to fix that in just a second, because we're going to offset this by a specific value. But this value needs to be multiplied by a scene texel size, which is going to make sure it's going to be accurate to the size of the screen. So now if we multiply this by a value, so let's make a parameter here and call it CA underscore amount. And this guy is going to control how strong our effect is going to be. So if we chuck this guy into here like that, apply and save. And just before we go into our scene, for testing purposes, we're going to want to get the red value here. Because if we offset this, it's just going to offset the whole image and we're not really going to get the right effect. So if we mask this with a component mask to the red channel. And then if we duplicate these guys down here, we're going to want to get the other channels. So if we get the G and B and untick R. And now we want to recombine them. So if we append vector like here. And this is going to give us our R, G, and B in one value, like this. And if we apply and save, and go into our scene, we create a little instance here, and go to our post-process volume, and then go down to our post-process materials, and add this guy in. And if we just open this guy up, you should see that if we increase the value, it will push a red channel in a direction. Okay, cool. So let's go back into our material. Give ourselves a little bit more space. We're going to want to add a little bit more control to this just before we go any further. So just before we multiply this with our texel size, if we create a three vector here and convert it to a parameter, this is going to act as our direction. So if we name it direction R and let's put a one value in the R for now. So it's red. And if we multiply these guys together, like this and you're going to get a little error here and the reason for this is that this is a three vector and these guys operate on a two vector basis so if we mask this with our component mask and all you need is an rng like here that should be the warning gone compile and save and what this is going to allow us to do is control the direction that the red value is going to travel in so if we again go back into our scene and go to our instance and 
with the value that we've got in. It's quite extreme at the moment, but if we play about with this, if we push up on the G, it will go vertically. And if we play about with the red, it will go horizontally. Cool. So if we go back into our material now, we just need to do the other channels. So we can get rid of this guy for now. And if we copy these guys here, just down to here. And this is going to be our G offset. So if we change our mask to G, like here, and our direction R, let's just rename this to G. And again, if we just copy these guys down a little bit here again, just one final time. And this is going to be our B values. So if we rename that to direction B and our mask to B. So now we just need to add these together. So if we append these guys together and then add another append. Just add in your B. Your image should go back to normal. And if we apply and save. Try this guy out. So let's maybe offset the B by the G so it goes up the way. Cool. Alright, so let's go back into our material and clean some of this up. So in here, just so this is a little bit easier to read, if we go to our channel name, Instead of R, this is going to be horizontal. And in the G, it's going to be vertical. And we can just copy and paste these guys into here as well. Cool. And just for a little bit extra control, I'm going to add in a distance fall off. So if actors are further away from the camera, the effect can kind of be cut off, making it easier to see things at a distance. So if we right click and create another scene texture. And this time, let's make this a scene depth. And out the color, if we mask this to the red value. And to control the actual distance of this effect, what we can do is divide this by a number, so let's make a parameter here. And let's call it CA underscore distance. And just as standard, let's say 1024. And now if we saturate this, I'm gonna create a little switch here, which is gonna allow us to invert this effect. So if we create a switch, and let's call this invert distance. And for true, if we connect in our effect, but if it's false, let's say a 1 minus. So now all we need to do is multiply this guy with our CA amount. Now for this tutorial, I'm just going to use the same amount for all channels, but you can create a unique parameter per channel if you want to control the strength of each one independently. Okay, so if we create a multiply, And I'm going to use this guy here, like this. Chuck this guy in there. And I'll just get rid of these guys. I'll just replace them like that. Cool. And I'm just going to pop this guy in a group called Distance. Same with this guy. And these guys can be in Direction. Cool, so if we apply and save, and go back into our scene, have a go at our instance here, as we increase this value or decrease it, you can see the fall off of this effect actually 
gets more or less extreme. And we can invert it as well, so that the object nearest us isn't affected at all. But the object in the distance here is. Which is pretty cool. So yeah, I think that's the end of this tutorial. As I said before, if you like our content or just need a helping hand with your project, join our Discord or check out our calendar for slots today. We provide one-on-one -on -one sessions where we offer help in 3D asset creation, Unreal Blueprints, Materials, Steam Page Setups and more. So yeah, I'll see you guys later. Bye!